Hello, and Christ is in our midst. Or instead, for this Christmas season, we say, Christ is born and glorify him. Well, this doesn't look like a very Christmassy kind of place. In fact, it's the, the boiler room where we keep mops and brooms and pots and pans. It's probably the, the ugliest place in our church. But I want you to remember that when Jesus was born, he was not born in a beautiful place. He was born in a stable. In the Orthodox tradition, we say he was born in a cave where an innkeeper would have kept the animals and the straw, and it would have been a very smelly, dark place. It might have been warm, like the boiler room, but it was ugly, dark, smelly. But if you hear the boiler going on right now, uh, it wasn't a very peaceful birth that Jesus had with Mary and Joseph and then the shepherds and the wise men. Uh, it was like this. It was not a normal birth. Well, I'm going to take you upstairs and we can talk more about Jesus and his birth. And what we now know is a very beautiful celebration. But it began in this way, as a very sad, poor celebration uh, of a birth. Well, now I'm taking you up through the kitchen and up the stairs. And then we'll go into the church where we, we do have our celebrations. And I'll show you the, the very beautiful stained glass icon that we have for the celebration of Christmas. Here is the icon of, of Christmas in stained glass. There's Jesus in the center as a baby, and then his mother, Mary, the Theotokos, the mother of God. And behind her, Joseph, and then shepherds on the right, and far up the top, you can see the star of Bethlehem. But as we look at this beautiful stained glass, we need to keep remembering that the very first Christmas, the birth of Jesus, took place in a dark and smelly and difficult place when there was no room in the inn for Joseph and Mary and the new baby. Let me show you also the, the main icon of Christmas. Here we have the beautiful icon that brings all the different pieces of the story of Jesus' birth together. In the center, you see Jesus lying in a manger. A manger is a, a feed bin where animals, you see the a couple of the animals there, a feed bin that animals would, would feed from. They'd put straw in there and eat from there. You see Mary, his mother, in the center. You see over on this side on the bottom, you see Joseph wondering what it's all about. You here have some, some women helping with the, after the birth of Jesus to wash him. Here you have some shepherds. Over there, some more angels announcing the birth of Jesus. And over here, you have the, the wise men, the magi, or the three kings who are coming just a little later to bring their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the icon that we'll have in the church all during the, the celebration of the Christmas season. And I wanted to leave you with the
the two names that we hear in the Gospel, chapter 1 of the Gospel of Matthew, that talks about the birth of Jesus. The angel tells Joseph that the baby's name, the baby that Mary would give birth to, the baby's name would be Jesus. And then the angel says, this is because he will save his people from their sins. The word Jesus is also related to the name Joshua, or in Hebrew, uh, Yeshua, which means someone who saves or delivers, who rescues. And people who, have, who had heard of that name would have remembered the name of Joshua in the Old Testament. He was the, the right-hand man of Moses, and Joshua was the one who saved the people of Israel and brought them into the promised land of, of Canaan. And so Jesus uh, reminds people of Joshua, the one who saves, but he's not bringing them into a, a new land, but he's saving them by delivering them from their, their sins, anything bad that they do. They forget God's forgiveness is represented by the name Jesus. Jesus saves by, by forgiving uh, people their sins and opening a new life uh, in forgiveness of sins. And then in the same gospel passage, in the first chapter of Matthew's gospel, uh, the other name that's given to Jesus is Emmanuel, which is a Hebrew word that means God is with us. And at Christmas services, we hear that repeated a lot. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. And that's really at the, the heart of the meaning of Christmas. All of this all the things that we, we have in the church about Christmas uh, are, are to underline that God is with us. And he's with us in times of sadness, in times of poverty, when we're feeling depressed or lonely, when we're sick, when we're joyful. If you can think of any kind of time in your life, whether it's a high point in your life or a low point, God is with you. And that's why we say so much, God is with us when we look at, at Jesus. And so, as we think back about how I started this little story uh, in the boiler room, in the, the ugliest place of the church, um, just like Jesus is born in a cave, a smelly, dark cave, uh, we remember that God is even in places like a dark cave. Uh, sometimes it's a physical cave, but sometimes you may feel that you're in your own dark cave if you're sad or depressed, and God is with you even then, maybe even especially then. So as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, we'll say again, Christ is born, glorify him.